There are a couple of things you should know about the program you're about to watch. Our first guest, Gigi Allen, has been called the most violent man in rock and roll. Some of what you're about to hear may not be suitable for children. Also, four nights after Gigi Allen taped this broadcast, he gave his last concert here in New York. As usual, his performance was fraught with the onstage violence that had become his trademark. The next day, Gigi Allen was found dead. A police investigation is underway into the cause of his death, but a drug overdose is suspected. What follows is Gigi Allen's last interview. Parental discretion is strongly advised. This rock musician says he has more power over your children than you do. It's such a, a fierce, intense fire burning inside. I mean, it just was, it was so much that it just wants to explode. Gigi Allen brags he's on his way to becoming the leader, the messiah for America's youth. He already claims to have a million followers. Wherever he goes, he plays to sell out crowds. And this is what they see. Concerts filled with violence, bloodshed, and sexual assault. Gigi Allen wants to lead America's young people in a bloody revolution to take over the country. And he says nothing can be done to stop him. Why is that, Gigi? Nobody will stop you because I am the true underground messiah. When you come to my show, you're going to a war. And I'm out for violence, chaos, un lawlessness all the way. I don't care about anybody or anything except for myself and my mission. And your kids out there, if you've got kids out there, they're going to be my kids. I'm going to own those kids. They're going to do anything that I say. And why is that? Why do they do anything you say? Because I'm the king. And they can identify with me because the real, true, nonconformist children in this country are sick and tired of their parents, their school, their people force-feeding them what to do. I am the answer. When they listen to my lyrics, and they listen to my songs, they're listening to the way okay. that it really should be, and you know that, and I know that, so don't brain, because your kids are my kids. All right, let me, I don't mean any disrespect here. I had never heard of you before we were going to do this show, okay? And I did a lot of reading about you, all right? Now, I want to know, is this, you seriously mean what you're saying? Absolutely. This is not I've been doing this ever since I was a child. I have been, this is, what you see is what you get. I do this, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I'll still smell the same way, I'll still look the same way. This is not a show, this is not an act. I am that guy. Now, do you, okay, do you honestly believe yes. that you're a charismatic figure? I believe that I am the king, I am the messiah, I rule the rock and roll and underground. I'm bringing us to a revolution against the government, against the police, against any form of society that is trying to put us down and restrict us in any way, shape, or manner. You cannot conform. You must be a true nonconformist. To hell with what your parents have to say. Okay, okay. I am the man. Okay. So all you have to do is listen to what I have to say. Okay, well, who told you you were the Messiah? I said I was. Okay. And I am because these kids, I get letters from all over the world. People worship me. They come to my shows. I'm going to rape the girls. I might rape the guys. I might have sex. I'm, I want it all. I want it all, and I'm going to have it all. Okay, let me ask Because I am everything. All right, yeah. You uh, you go way beyond sex, drugs, and rock and roll in your performances. You uh, self-mutilate on, on I stage. I self-mutilate. I beat the <laughs> out of my audience. If they're in my way, I take them out. I don't care. I don't care about anybody or anything. When you come to my show, I'm the boss. I'm the king. You do what I say. You can challenge me. I have no problem with yeah. that. I, I like the confrontation. Yeah. But you're going to lose. All right, do you... Are you, are you proud of what you do? Absolutely proud of what I do. Why are you proud of what you do? Because I am who I am, and I'm not a phony like everybody else out there. I am real. And I, how many of you can, at 35 years old, sleep with 16, 12, 13-year-old girls and boys and animals? Hey, this is the life. I got it all. And I got your kids. You worried about him, audience, or what? Yeah? No, you better be. How many of you aren't worried? How many of you think this is so ridiculous your kids would never buy you're, into well, it? Well, you're... Okay, right. well, come on. Come on, I'll take you on. Well, don't run right, right now. Come on. All right, simmer down. Come simmer on down. down. Simmer down. We'll simmer see, down. won't we? All right. It sounds like you, I mean, it sounds like you're real angry. I've been angry since the day one. I knew the yeah, day well, I why, was born. Why are you so angry? I just hate everybody. There's no need for me to like everybody. Everything that I have in this world, I put back into number one. I am number one. I don't need to give anything to anybody. You don't need to give anything back. I don't need to give anything back. I take it off. All right, why, do you know why you have so much hatred? 
I have so much hatred because I look at these people, these robots, these, these conformists, these people that dress in their uniforms, and I'm sick and tired of it. What are you wearing? What is this that? This is not a uniform that's for not me. A uniform? You could say it's a uniform. I could say that's a uniform. So I got a but uniform. This is, you what I would, a uniform. No, this is what I wear every day. If you see me tomorrow and you're wearing Manhattan, you'll see me wearing yeah. this, and probably a whole lot less because you people wouldn't let me take my clothes off. I'd rather be out here naked. This is a good decision. It does not matter. All right. Yeah. This is real, and it's very important that people know that their kids are my kids, and I'm going to teach them, right. and you can't have them back. You repeated yourself on that. Well, I'll okay? repeat it again All until right. you get it right. I want to get new information. We have limited time here. Um, do you what care do you about? Want? Do you care about anything? I don't care about anything but myself and what I write and what I do is law. How many times have you been in jail? I've been in jail. I've been arrested over 52 times. I've spent three years in prison. Uh, what's your ultimate idea of a, of a performance, of a fantasy performance? All of it's not a fantasy performance, Jane. Come on, everything I do is real. It comes out of my head. Well, what's your I live this life every day. When I'm on stage, it's my therapy. It's not a performance. It's a ritual. And the ultimate performance would be when I have reached my peak, and I'm not there yet. So don't you all clap when I say this. I'll commit suicide, but I'll take your kids with me. What does that mean, you'll take you, take our it kids means with what you? you? Whatever I just said, I'll take them with me. Well, what's it mean? Doesn't it mean make I'll any kill sense. them, too, if I have to. Or they may kill themselves. When you reach your peak, it's time to die. And when do you think your peak's going to be? Whenever the battle is over, yeah. whenever you have lost the power to fight. When you have got the power to fight, you fight. When you lose the power, you kill yourself or I'll kill you. Are you a happy person? I'm beautiful. <laughs> He's happy. All right, let me let me just... All right, how many of you, we have some of your fans in the audience, uh, identify yourselves here. Anybody? <coughs> yeah, just, I didn't want to guess, okay? Stand up for me here. Uh, what, what's his appeal as you see it? Well, I'm his brother and I'm the bass player in his band, the Murder Junkies. Are you are his brother, for yeah. real? Yeah. And, Your brother? You know, I, I just, I just think that touring with Gigi is is a great experience because it's you don't go on stage, you don't do the same thing night after night like most of these lame ass boring bands. You get up there, you're gonna see something different and something new and something exciting every night. And you believe Whether in the somebody gets beat up or sent to the hospital what is this or about prison beating people or whatever. Up? What is this it's about beating great, it's a war out there. What's you know? a war? Do you see these people beating each other up in the audience? Well, well we beat them up problem, afterwards. Man. Wait a minute. Okay, thank you very much. What? Well, it's the, it's the whole confrontation. See, a lot of people come to my shows expecting a freak show, and they get caught up in the crossfire because they don't realize that what goes on in my mind is very real. And if they're in my way, and if I see somebody there that's just there to see the freak show, then they're, then they're going to be taken out. The only people that are left in my are my allies who are standing at the end of the show. Those who have been sent to the hospital, those who have been raped or left or ran out the doors, they're the enemy. The people who stay are the allies right. of which we you, take on and we will rule. You mentioned this rape thing. If you were really a rapist, I mean, you'd be in jail for a lot longer How do you than three know? years. How do you know? Just a guess. I don't... I get girls to give me what I want. This is... But this is... I then have, why is that rape? They're consenting to give you sex. They're consenting, but I have had women on stage that weren't consenting, and I don't care. I will continue to have those women. Well, I'll I pull them up I... on stage. Well, say what you want. But you can... All right. I have raped women on stage, and I've raped men on stage. I've had women come on stage and, and, and suck my <laughs> and, and whatever I wanted them to do, because I'll just take them up there. Um, if you're so proud of what you do, why don't you get the hat and the sunglasses, you know, you'll never, I, I'll never I can look you right to you. Yeah, I don't perform to say... anybody. I go to school so I can tell people. So I don't care. So you go to school? You go to school? Yeah, wow. I'm a, I'm what are you going to learn person. in school? You ain't going to learn nothing in school. Because I'm the only Not one that can like teach you. you. Take your I'm the only one that can teach you. Sit back down. I'm the only one that can teach you. You can't teach me. I am the Savior. I am the God. And I'll look you straight in the eyes. And I'll tell you that, because I am the Do God. me a favor, would you sit, would you sit, all right, you're not on mic back there, sit down for me. What do you really think is so special about you? I'm a very unbelievable person because I believe in myself, and I have a very strong mind, and I can get anything that I want. And most people go through life very bland and very boring, and they accept what's given to them. They accept what people teach them and what people tell them. I have said no over and over again to authority. Authority cannot tell me what to do. The schools cannot tell me what to do because from day one, I never listened to them. I taught myself. I'm strong. I'm very strong. And, and I'm very proud of the if person so that I am. Then, 
And then why do you want to go down in flames and peek out where, of the early age? My peak because I don't want to die a boring death like all of you people will probably do. I'm going to live to the maximum capacity. Right. And when I reach my capacity, go down in flames. Why do I want to get old and get boring? Is this what happens? You get old, you get boring? I didn't even well, know. Well, most people do. There's no age. I'm not setting, I'm not setting an age limit yeah. on it. I'm saying when you reach that peak, there's no age. But you immediately assume... Some people reach their peak at 10. Some people reach their peak at 40. Okay. You immediately... Uh, you assume that all of us out here are boring people. Is that your assumption? I assume that just by looking at most of you, you probably are. All right. But after you reach your peak and you commit suicide, you're going to go to hell and you're going to live a miserable life. How do you life. know that? I'm going to live forever because my soul's too short. But I know you're going to go to hell you're and live a miserable life. You're the one that's going to go to nowhere land, baby, because I'm going to live forever. My soul is too strong. It Wait can't a second. All right, let when me... you die in your peak, you can't die. Your soul cannot die when you die in your peak. All right, wait a minute, you're wearing me out here, Gigi. Uh, what is it? What do you think motivates this guy, folks? Who's got an answer to that question? All these ludicrous people that listen to him, those are the people that motivate him. Because if ludicrous people wouldn't be listening to him, no, then he would have no reason weakling, to be weakling, with him. Weakling. You are okay? nothing. You I'm are a that weakling. Small I want to live until so I'm 80 that years small. old. I mean, you're I that big. Live. Physically, but you're that small with my kids, I want to see great grandchildren and everything, okay? And my kids will never follow you because your I'm kids Hispanic will be right on to and this. we don't listen to none your of your, will, okay? Yeah. And you might be too. You're well, not, come on. You're not on microphone. Yeah, okay. Next, we're going to meet two 17-year-old uh, girls who are true believers in everything you've just heard Gigi Allen say. They've given up everything to follow him, and they say they do any for anything for him, even die. We'll be back. <laughs> As to whether Gigi Allen says he really intends to go through this suicide plan remains to be seen. What remains to be seen? Rock musician Gigi Allen sees himself as a savior for America's young people. He says he's training them to carry out a revolution based on destruction and violence. Joining us now are two of his devout followers. Wendy and Liz are both 17, and they say they do anything for Gigi Allen. Really? Anything? Yes, I will do anything for Gigi Allen. I will die for him. I will do anything for him. He is my God. He is my daddy, and I will do it all for him. He's your daddy? What's that mean? He is my daddy. He is I've adopted her. When she came out and followed me on the road, I told her, I, I showed her more things than her daddy could ever show her. He is my Literally. daddy. And on Father's Day, what did we do, daughter? On Father's Day, my daddy gave me the great gift of letting me watch him masturbate, and I got in his mouth, and it was the greatest father-daughter experience I've ever had in my life. Do you have parents? I don't care about I them. Am. Who cares? He's Who my parents? parents. So you have parents, but he's your father. Who needs he, parents? Who cares? Who needs them? He is my only... He's what, my God. Okay, he's my what, daddy. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of rhetoric here. What I'm not hearing is what his appeal is. What's his appeal? He's the most gorgeous human to walk the face of this earth. He is God. He is the greatest. He understands my my anger. He understands me, and he... He teaches me everything I need to know. I don't need anyone but him. I don't need any school. I don't need any government. I need him. That's all I need. And that's all I live for. You know, I, I don't want, I, you know, I don't want to annoy you, but it sounds, you sound like almost like you've been brainwashed by him. You I'm sound not like, brainwashed. I know exactly what I'm saying. I teach these but you, you sound strong. like you've got this, like, but you sound like you have this, like, rap down, and it, just, it sounds like it's his rap. What's it's your not rap? His rap. It's, it's the way I feel. And I it's teach, the truth. I, and anyone who doesn't believe it can just go to hell. I teach them to be strong. I teach them to follow me, but I also t teach them to be strong individuals. Independent strong? In independent strong, but, but my way or the highway. Well, okay, do you feel like you're, do you feel like you're uh, independent? Oh, yeah, I'm completely independent. I, I mean, I have made my own decisions for myself. You know, I got up and I, I quit my job and I left my family, my friends, I sold my car, I left my home to, to be with him and to follow him and to go with him across the country. And, and what spoke to you about him? Gigi is, is, He's a great teacher. He's taught me a lot of things. He's taught me to stand up for myself, and he's given me a lot of positive energy, and he, he's got a lot of power with me. And so you have no other life but him? 
Not right now, no. I mean, my life is what I'm doing. Do you have a family someplace else? Yeah, I have a family. I hate my family. You hate your, have you always hated your family? Yeah. I've hated them for a long time. They're negative people. They don't, they don't, they don't help me think better of myself. They only tell me bad things about me. They, you know, they don't say anything good to me. They don't teach me to stand up for myself. They teach me to, they shelter me. That's what they want to do. That's why I had to get up and, you know, leave because. And he was the answer for you. That's why yeah. these girls are better off to be with me because if whatever they do or whatever happens to them when they're with me won't happen to them with anybody else. Well, if they I hang would, out with you, they could wind up in jail, couldn't they? They could wind up in jail. They could wind up in a hospital too. But now that wouldn't but, bother uh, you? Or are you saying, Liz, that that wouldn't bother you? To wind up in a hospital? Or jail? Or jail? No, it wouldn't bother me if I'm doing what I want. If they end up in jail, jail jail's only going to make you stronger anyway. Putting somebody in jail is not going to slow them down. I've been in jail many, many times, as you well know. Every time they put me in jail, every time I come out that much stronger, because all I have to do is sit in there and reload the gun and plot for the next target that I will come in front of. Because it makes me much more violent when what, I go back. What do you think What do you think's going to happen to your life? What do you see yourself doing? I feel that very soon there will be another Holocaust and it will be led by Gigi. And and we're going to destroy the world and we're going to create violence. And, and all your children are going to turn against you and they're going to follow Gigi and they're going to follow us. And we're going to just lead everyone straight to hell and we're just going to be the leaders of the universe. And anyone who doesn't follow us is going to die. Then I guess right you're now. not going to your senior prom. Right. right now, we, me and Gigi are going across the country and we're going to, you know, screw with people and we're going to, you know, take what we want and we're going to do what we want. And you're, everybody here... Life is too short yeah. to, to, to wait well, for you know, things to happen. Too short. You can take them. You, you can get whatever good, you, you want. You bring up a good point. There's so much misery in the world already. Why would you just sex This is violence? not misery to us. This is what violence? we want to do. We're taking what we want to do. Beating you people, people always dream about what you want. I'm doing what I want. I've had sex with these girls. This is... Yeah. You know, that's okay. fine. I can get what I want. I can have what I want because I can take it. Do you have what you want, really? Yes, I have what I want, but I'm going to have a whole lot more. All right. Now, the sex and violence doesn't bother you? No, not at all. I'm, I am love I love to be violent with people. You do? Yeah. I hate people. You hate people? I hate people. All people? Most people. Just on sight, you hate them? Yes, I just hate what, what people stand for. Many people, you know, you stand for all different things, and I hate most of them. They're all robots. They're all controlled by our society. Our society has no right to tell us what we can and cannot do. Okay, audience, what do you think? <laughs> stand up. Uh, any of them on drugs? <laughs> I would be very Are you serious. on drugs? Are you? Are you? Are you? I We're think on you drugs. are. We're, We're on threat. drugs when we choose to be. When but it's not a necessity. We have strong minds. So that means yes. That okay. means when we, we do want what we to be. want. We do drugs if we want to do drugs. We'll rape you if we want to rape you. I don't we'll... know what's responsible. Do you have children? <laughs> right. Do you have children? She's off mic right now. Stand up well, over here. Too bad, cause... We're going to take them down. All of them. My question is with all three of you. You say you're the Messiah. But there is one Messiah and that's God. I am God. And my advice, if you are led by that and God, my advice to do, you are fooled by a false Bible and a false bringing up because there is only one true God and that lives within my me. Advice, I am that God. You can read the Bible, but it's crap. I'll wipe my butt with it. My advice to these two lovely girls, please don't follow this man. Follow Christ. He's all the he, way. They are. I, I am Christ. He I am is. Christ. He's not. I hear all this t talk about free sex. Don't you consider about your HIV status? Who cares? What? My sex life is my business. They can have sex with don't me. Worry and about they, it. If, they, if they don't there. have a problem with it, why would you have a problem with it? Uh, okay, I know. Yeah, quickly here for me. I know they want to take a break. Yeah. If you're such a god and such a messiah, aside from the three idiots and these two beetles just looking good, where are all your followers? Where are all your followers? You gotta be joking. Come on. How could you have sex with Look these at you. You're Look the at these mis horrible beasts. I don't You're understand. You're just young because them. you can't have them. You are young black girls. I'm not saying I'm going to rape somebody. Look at this. This is disgusting. All right, all right. So what? We're right. just so what? All right. We can be disgusting. If we want to be disgusting, we can be disgusting. Next, a group of young people known as the club kids who are the consummate pleasure seekers. 
They work at only one thing, having fun, and that translates into staying out all night, doing drugs, and partying. We'll be back. Talking with rock musician Gigi Allen, who says he's a self-proclaimed messiah of America's youth. Now meet the club kids. They say they don't need a messiah. Walt Paper, Michael, Richie, and Julie have made the pursuit of pleasure into a religion. They are total hedonists who live to stay out all night, do drugs, and party. That's simple, Walt Paper, yes? Yeah, well, basically we get paid to show up at nightclubs run around, even though drugs aren't required, a lot of times they come in contact with what we do because, I mean, our job is to run around and have fun and be glamorous and look good. And so a lot of times when people run around and have fun, of course, drugs, you know, are a lot of times a part of it, but it's not a major part of it. Basically, our job is entertainers and attractions at nightclubs. Do you get paid to show up at parties like this? Yes. Why? Like this? Why because not? we look like yeah. this. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we attract attention, no. you know what I mean? People come, and it's just like as if a, a musician was supposed to show up at a club. People go who appreciate that musician. We have people out there who appreciate So us. you each have a following it's because for... of our sharp wit and personality. Oh, I can understand <laughs> that. Our... Well, now, can you make a living at this, Michael? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's easy to make. Well, in New York, you can. Yeah? yeah? It's a lot easier in New York than other cities. A lot of kids from all over the country come to New York Mm -hmm. And write us letters and the, call us and ask us how to become a club kid. We want to be like you. Guys, you give us a job. Are We're kind of like him. In, in, a, yeah. in a different kind of way. Yeah. You know? well, how would you explain that? Well, we, because, just what he said. We're like we're our own messiahs yeah. too, and we, you know, and right. I mean, we, we have a different belief than him, but we, just like he said, I agree. We believe in ourselves, and it's all about, you know, uh, but it's not yeah. about and we step yeah. outside of what normal people do. I mean, our exactly. lifestyles are as far from normal and regular as anything else is what he's doing. It's just on a different level. Which you know what I mean? Don't they're, achieve they're more the violence. So we're more annihilators. Right. <laughs> so right. Uh, his, his, so his, yin and yang, you know. His thing is a little bit more political than ours. Ours is more social. You know, we're and dealing with social right. things in society. Okay, and superficial. Things. Superficial. There's no redeeming social value. It's to a what you totally do. superficial scene. We're not doing it for political reasons or social reasons. Uh huh. You know, the club kids are there to mm -hmm. have. Fun. We're like an invitation to everybody. It's like you can choose to look at it one way, like to the negative, but it's more the positive. It's like it's a part. It's a dress up party, and everybody's invited. Okay. But, now, do you see yourself as doing this, like you know? 30 years from now? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I, have or, I mean, we just get better, yeah. you know, and in more demand, you know what I mean? It's because we mean. establish ourselves more with the things that we do, with our outfits, with our looks, and that's how, why we get paid to do what we do. I mean, there's a lot of other people that go to nightclubs and dress up, but not necessarily all of them get paid. You have to reach a certain level. So you're saying you can make a living at this? You file well, a... we do. Uh, hold on. You file a tax return on that sort of stuff? It's a, it's a stepping stone to something else. It's also. like a vehicle to launch different careers. It's like show business, show business, and it's like... We use this as our foundation to this move up to higher things. So some people just choose to just do this. Like this is said. a scene that, gi that gives um, that gives birth to a lot of stars of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The scene uh, started Delight, the scene started Madonna, ah, RuPaul. RuPaul. A lot of talent comes out from this. They start as club kids and they dress up and have fun to get exposure, to get people noticed. You earn a name for yourself and then Designers. you go on to do something else. If you go on to be a designer, suddenly it's not Joe Smith designing an outfit. It's <laughs> Desi Monster or Wallpaper. And exactly. you'll have an established scene and you'll have a following that will go out and buy those okay, clothes or you, buy your records or whatever. Like dirt, oh, is work a dirty word in your vocabulary? This, believe me, this no. is a ton of work. It is. Oh, so it is yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Really loud. I mean, it's not easy. Work to, it's not you know easy I mean? to get up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and well, come to the, it's not the easy, but TV show. It's different than choosing to like punch in a time clock because it, it's like even if we it, even if we didn't make a living at it, we were doing it before. See, because I, I guess I was misinformed. I heard that a lot of kids with trust funds and kids with rich parents well, did that's this. Well, that's, oh, that's how you start. Oh, that's how you start. I came to New York to go to school and essentially took the money that I was using for school, at least part of it, and started buying my clothes. And that's how you start. You bought this? Yeah. Well, actually, no. No, I, 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 I didn't mean it that way. Let me just, what is, I mean, it looks like an ace bandage. Well, it's actually made by a designer Michael named Michael Schmidt, oh, who my does God. clothes for oh, Cher. 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 All right. And 
But basically, it starts out like that. But once we establish ourselves, then the money starts coming in. We get paid exactly. to show so up. But basically, like, once rich your kids, parents find out what you do in the trust fund, it's, it's cut like off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but you came from some sort of right. financial cushion, in other words, basically. It, it, it helps to start mm -hmm. out that way. Okay. Then you don't have to move to New York and live in a rat hole, you know. Exactly. Right. All right. You have an like established my, re residence, a dorm, you know what I mean? You have a pretty solid setting. Do you think this is like a phase you're going through? Well, my mother, oh, let me answer that. <laughs> My brother's a lawyer. My mother always asks me, you know, Richie, are you ready to go back to school yet? And I say, she goes, you know, are you going through some sort of stage or something? It's not a stage well, I'm in. It's it a stage I'm on, you know? It isn't, it isn't, though. Everybody it's, is going, constantly going through stages and phases in their life. And like I said, mm -hmm. it can be a stepping stone to a career or to really whatever you and want plus, it to do. And plus you find that, um, you know, we're just... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, look, is your worst nightmare having a boring life? Yeah. Oh, is, is this, I think is this everybody, like what? Yeah. I think it should be nightmare. everybody. That's why, that's why Not everybody's just so ours. And miserable. When you walk down 34th Street in Manhattan, everybody has this miserable look on their face like, I hate, you know, I hate my life and I hate what I'm doing. I hate being here. And it's because they're not doing what they want to do. Choice. They're doing what somebody else wants. And plus, exactly. we've been doing this when we were growing up. I mean, most of right. us when we, we were growing up, mm -hmm. we found ourselves in different scenes, but we were still the weird ones. We were still the freaks. We were still the ones that stood out. It's just now we've gotten we're over being joked and being <laughs> the and now we're the superior because we're being paid to do what people were originally joking us for. But I don't think we should ju be saying that we're doing it just to get paid. We're, we're trying no, to no, set no, an no. example. It's an icing on the cake. Exactly. Right. What exactly. is the example you're trying to set? To let people know they don't have to follow the rules and not enjoy their lifestyle. Okay, let me just ask the audience. Anybody here inspired to follow, follow the club kids in terms of all pleasure, no work? Uh, we work. What? We work. Though. Anybody in the back? Somebody in the back? All right, we're going to find out during the break. We're going to take another There's break. There's a snake over there, I think. I no, know. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> Next, a police officer who warns that America's youth is headed for disaster. He's he says Gigi Allen and the Club Kids personify why young people are more violent and self-destructive than ever before. We'll be back. If your spouse has unrealistic or unusual sexual expectations and it's ruining your marriage, please call 1-800-370-2712. America's younger generation on a dangerous road to violence and destruction? Police Sergeant Steve Rogers says yes. He says more than ever before, young people are turning violent or spinning out of control. Great. Um, is this an, I don't know, is this an example of what you're talking about? Well, to about? begin with, uh, Jane, David Koresh resurrected here, said that he's real. The fact of the matter is he is real. He's a real sick animal who belongs in the yeah, well, you <laughs> But I don't have to listen to you, because I think you're a stupid talk. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let me just go ahead. You need to get a job on Dragnet or something. These individuals... All right, Steve, go ahead. These individuals work on fear and intimidation. Look at the helmet. Anti-Semitism written all over them. You probably want to see... I don't need the helmet. Good. I'm glad you showed me. I'm glad. And I can say, I still think you're an ass. Glad you just showed me you have no brains. I got more brains in my head than you'll ever have in ten heads. Your name is Gigi. You no, yeah, no, you, you gotta change your name. You gotta change your name to no you brains, no nonsense, no All right, all right, come here, all right. This is not going anywhere. Just, well, if you're excuse you me, you talk. Then I'm gonna say Okay, can I just say something? Just a second. Let me just say something here. You talk, you talk for the whole first segment over ten minutes. Just give him a shot. All right, I'm not telling you what to say. Well, he's not going to insult my intelligence. You ought to All change right. your initial to ASS before you way around. You ought to change your ass to fucking BRC. All right, Steve. Change your initials to the next time you spit at me. What are you going to do? You're going to have a real problem. Don't think so. Gonna take a break. We'll be back. We'd like to hear from you. Send your letter in care of Jane Whitney, Columbus Circle, Post Office Box 20314, New York, New York, 10023. That's 
talking with rock musician Gigi Allen, the club kids, Sergeant Steve Rogers. You had some you and I just have a comment to make okay. and a question. With the club kids, I could deal with them because I live in the clubs. Limelight, mm-hmm. Roseland, oh, okay? Yes. So I know what type <laughs> of crowd they are. <laughs> but it's those two young girls, I can't understand how they can allow themselves to be brainwashed but They're not, not brainwashed. Wait, let me finish what They're I'm going to say. Don't <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. No, what's going what's, what, what's to happen to you when your so-called messiah disappears? We're going Where's with him. Going? You're going with him? Oh. Listen. I, I, I okay, know. I know. You don't You're get it. I understand. Uh, Steve, we, you didn't really talk about I mean, she says the club kid, she can deal with the club kid. She does the club scene. I mean, do you have a problem with the way they live? Well, any anyone, if in fact they are uh, involved with drugs, drug abuse, I don't... I don't condone that. I think that's wrong. I think it's 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 again uh, ruining the moral fiber of our country. What we have here, what we have here, and I, I think this is important to address, is a chilling wind sweeping across this nation. Whereas these individuals are 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 trying to capture the hearts and minds of young people. Uh, this to me, no, that's what you're trying this, to do. This to me is a complete waste. And no, uh, we are trying, trying to control trying, the minds of young people. One of the problems, the problems what they want to do. Yeah. One of the problems. Right. To Please. Take drugs, look. They all take drugs. One of the problems Drugs the way they want. Do what they want to. Who are you to say? I happen to be a police officer. Who well, I don't care who you, you are. You belong in prison. You have a problem. I don't have a problem. You belong in prison. You are in prison. Let me tell you something. You are. Because you can't live the way you want to condemn everybody else this the guy, way they live. This guy, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm the doing of why exactly. this country is going down. The no, track. we're going and, up. And gonna, we're going see, up. You're going There's down. something else, Jane, that he said. He said that he's not afraid of anyone. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of anything. I challenge him right now to what? Go to Harlem. I'm going to Harlem to walk the streets. Let's go. And if you have the I would. If you're, you don't have the guts to do whatever it takes for me to do, I'll do whatever. You want to go? I'll, I'll ride with you. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. So show. I you know. ain't got the balls to come to one of my shows Pain either. Imitation. Why don't you come in to one it's of my shows? You're a state cop. You're a, you're a wannabe cop. I am? You, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you I'm are. Not guys, Jersey. Guys, well, I don't guys, care guys, guys. Well, that's your problem. All right, listen. I'm going to ask you one more time, mind. okay? Well, I know. I know. Nobody gets hurt. Just trust me on that, all right? Uh, you want to say something down here? Let's talk about yeah, I have an opinion. I think that the club kids and Gigi Allen, I'd rather have my kids follow original thought like that than grow up to be like a cop right yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm absolutely with that. And wearing a tasteless suit. Jane, Jane, again, we go back to, to what is fundamentally right. Let's get him. Right. Okay, but, but it is yeah, your turn. Okay, hold on a second here. I mean, conforming is one thing, right and wrong is something else. You're talking... Who's to say what is right and wrong? Him? Well, I mean, there are most people, the majority of people would probably say that beating up on other people and yeah, trashing people their heads with a razor. Beating up people on get people, paid to get beaten up. Beating up on people, mm-hmm. raping people, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is wrong. I don't know what's right in that. Man, it's wrong. It's and wrong. Wrong. What, Michael? You, we have a little pill that this man could take that would change his whole attitude <laughs> on that. <laughs> yes. Oh, Give it to him. Oh. Give him an overdose. Oh, I only have two left. <laughs> What so you're like, well, oh, why isn't he busted? Why is he well, open about well, this? Well, obviously, he's taking well, so this many pills, his brains are fried. No, this is a tranquilizer. His brains are fried. It's off. It's off. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> And this is the prescription. Yeah. So, th- so this is like, but this is what you do when you're in the clubs, this sort of thing. Well, it makes it, it makes it a lot easier too. to like handle things. Jane, what we're seeing here is the attempt to glorify the abuse of drugs, yeah. the abuse of people, the spewing of hatred to legitimize this. I don't see anything that's right with that. It's all wrong. Okay. He didn't give more up at all to to promote drug use for everybody in the audience. No, I I I will. I'll tell bit. you who I am. All right. You are nobody to tell us what we can and cannot year, do. Jane, you live your life. And we'll you live ours. I'll give you a perfect illustration of what I mean. Last year, I happened to be on an attorney general's task force to Israel. Israel. Oh, I walked through the Holocaust Memorial. I saw with my own eyes the results of animals like this and like Hitler and the rest of them, what they could do like to Hitler. this nation. It's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to stand up, America. You've got to wake up. You against people like him who are trying to control us. They're trying to control you a whole lot more than you are 
because of you are so idiotic. You try to tell us what we can and cannot do. You try to arrest us. You come to my shows and put me in jail for what people pay to see. And your people are coming and locking me up. What are you getting? You can't lock me up because you're telling them that it's okay that I should go to jail. You got one of those pills? Give her one. No, you're saying that I should go to jail because I do what I want to do. Can we get to get to this gentleman, please? You know, um. It'll be about 15 minutes. It'll take him about 15 minutes and watch it. You know, um, I serve this country, <laughs> and um, I'm going to tell you now, if I serve this country for people like you, I feel sad. This country's in sad shape. But yeah, both of you like you. Y'all are sad. We are great. We want you. Are you from the South? We are serving y'all. Okay, Richie, what? The thing is, I'm sorry. He must be from the South because he keeps saying y'all. Wait, the thing is, what I understand is, we are young and we're creating ourselves. And it's like not every single person on this panel has the same idea in mind. I know for myself, Julie and I, we are creative people and we express ourselves the way we want to. We use the club as a vehicle. But we're, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm the cause for what the world is like going down in, we into hell. We also preach individuality, but not through violence. Okay, but you know, people get stopped when they hear about the drug part. I mean, that stops a lot of people. But so what I want to say is, it gets a lot of other people going. Wait, wait, but what I want to say is not every, <laughs> but not every young person they, in the club and, and, they, they know, preach individuality. He preaches a sick, Ability to and there's a lot of us out there that enjoy that. Because well, not everybody I, wrong. Wrong. I think the majority of okay. Americans well, don't okay. believe I don't believe that at all. Think I think that they're, they're sick because they're Okay, control, another break. We'll be back. Them. We'll be back with the audience, okay? <laughs> If you're going to be in the New York area and would like free tickets to our show, please call 1-800-771-2700. Back now, you had something you wanted to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to ask the gentleman in the middle, have you ever been in any of the wars, Vietnam, maybe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vietnam? Never. The Gigi. Yeah. Oh, uh, what, what, what did she say? Did you, ever, did you ever yeah. serve in the military? Serve in Vietnam? No, I have my own war. I'm fighting. All right. You had something over here. Yeah. I think the club kids look really fabulous, but does the drugs affect you at all? Excuse me, let me answer that. Like, will they affect some people? I want you to know about Jane, one of the, one of the important things. Does me not affect it Can I say something? Okay, go. Like I said earlier, which you all must not understand, gorgeous over there. <laughs> not everybody in a club is on drugs, and people need to realize that. Maybe that's a different show, it's a different subject, but I want it to be expressed. Right, Jane, and, 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 and every, may I interrupt a minute? Jane, one of the things I think people have to realize, uh, it was a good question about him being in a, in a war. Uh, most of these people are cowards. They don't. You're the they coward. won't. They Take won't do what they do You alone. did what I did. What for they are doing? Yes. Yes. Did you notice one of these young ladies mentioned uh, something like uh, cleansing a Holocaust? What I'm driving at is this: we have a serious problem in this country where individuals like this are being uh, uh, almost martyred because of their acts of hatred and anger. I think we've got to say. No to hate like we have said no to drugs. No, We've because to say, you have to hate. We have you to have to no. be hate okay. to get something to done. No You've got to, to do hate. something about it, not talk about it. You have to, right, to take action. action. We want people like you. you are doing something. Put yeah, but you, you put them in jail for what we believe in. You're both right. <laughs> I believe in what I want to do, I'm going to do it. I just have a comment on what the um, sergeant said. I think that jail is the wrong place for these people. Absolutely. I think more along the line of a psychiatric yeah. ward. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there, too. I've been there, too. That's it. I'm glad to hear you. Or the Bronx Zoo. You look like you brought your name from the zoo. 38% increase in hate-motivated oh. violence, and we could correlate that directly with it's like this. No, you that's, are that's the not true. You have to I just, I just like to say I'm a club kid. I go out. I do what I want to do. I have my fun. I look nothing like that guy. These guys have their fun. They're not out raping people, hurting people, and doing stuff not like that. Really. And I'm thankful they don't look like that guy. And that guy should be in jail. No, no, no. Well, because, because, because I don't get rich off it, and I don't entertain. Then when I go to jail, you look, shouldn't uh, be raping. Look, uh, right. well, uh, I do. I just like to say. Is the root of all ego. <laughs> I just like to say, guys, girls, animals, no, I don't care. That's something to be proud of. I yes, don't wait, and I can, wait. I can do whatever kind of sex I want, you, and I'm getting it. Who is, you're we probably married me. to some old fat We're going to take bitch. another break. We're going to be back. We'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. 
You're watching our guests talking about their own life experiences. If you have a personal story that you'd like to share with our show, please call 1-800-370-2712. That's something I want to say. I just want to say that I think that all these people sort of in some way need some type of attention. That's the key. That's yeah. something that we fail to mention. You know, maybe they haven't gotten the attention when they were growing up. Now all of a sudden they want all this attention. This is their way of saying, I need help. I want people to see me. I want people to understand me. Why are you so sure about that? Why couldn't it just be about non-conformism? It's just not. You, if you listen to some of the stories, it just sounds like there was something that was missing. And so now this is their chance. They're crying out. They want help. But you know, ma'am, we could we could use that as an excuse. Uh, what I have to my right, uh, you know, I'm really concerned about. We're seeing the beginning stages of a Waco, Texas. I mean, this... Okay, you know, wait a minute. Change, well, change. Karen's point right here. What he's talking about is another day. How many of you Karen, agree no, with him? We're not... Yeah? James. Jane, we're not looking at a freak. I mean, this guy, you know, he's, he's not a freak. He knows what he's doing. He's carefully calculating what he's doing, and he has to be stopped. It's okay. a simple you're right. He has a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a point earlier made, it seems that, you know, everybody's complaining that Gigi beats up his audience and does whatever. People are forgetting that they're paying and going in knowing what's going to happen to them. I have seen people, grown men and women, thank him after the show for beating them up. Thank I'm not lying. I'm, I've, seen, I've seen people say, Gigi, you kicked me in the ribs. It hurts. Here's the bruise. Thank you so much. And and how what do you think this does? You, know, you get paid for that too. It's what they want to do. If they they want to no, get they want to pay to get living, beat up. Living, living that's fine with me. I have no problem. Beat up people. Want to get well, beat well, up? Yeah. No. That's very awful. That's very awful. That's very awful. A police officer can beat up somebody, then you can beat him up. but I can't do it. I think the cop is scarier because at least he fights alone. The police officer brings like about a gang. That's right. the way they yeah, always fight. Well, well, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't fight you with his hands. Don't fight you with his hands. I know something, my friend. Uh, the police take a good beating uh, uh, in not every way, shape, form. But I'll tell you this. I think most American people, thank God that there's a thin blue line protecting them from this. No. Guy. No, not at all. You're doing more damage by, yeah. by locking people up. It's frightening that Gigi's out in the street. From <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to have your daughter. Yeah. I'm going to have your daughter. <laughs> it's frightening that Gigi's out in the street. If you call yourself um, their father, then what you're doing with them, sleeping with them, is called incest. That's fine. All right, and in it's something that they can't do. Right. 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 No problem. I won't say that to him. Jane, this is what... That's an array of coffee Jane. coming up today. Jane, this is what... Incest? I can't say that. There's no right to tell me that I can't. This is my daughter. My wife was faced with 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And maybe the people, I'm glad you did this because you've exposed the ilk of America. You've no. exposed, you've exposed the, the power. That we're the having. power, the power of the underground <laughs> in America that speaks for the Sorry. angry youth. You're we're out of time. No, I say it, Steve, as a public the real service. No, I say it as a public service. People now know. I didn't know yes, who he was. We all know now. We're out of time. I want to thank everybody for being here. You, our audience. Maybe yours. Have a great day. For a transcript of our show, please send $5 along with the program name, subject, and air date to Burrell's Transcripts, Post Office Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. For a video cassette, call 1-800-4-VIDEO.